Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 43 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us talk about the chromosomal disorders and we will first talk about the Down syndrome. It is a genetic disorder as I said and it is due to some abnormality in the chromosome whether it is the chromosome structure or the chromosome number. The name being catchy, it is named after Langdon Down who first described it in 1866. So it was described long back. So after his name, it was named as Down syndrome. What is the cause of this? Presence of an extra copy of chromosome number 21. So as I said here, whenever you have some abnormal number of chromosomes, like in human beings, the total number of chromosomes should be 46. Now, if you have an extra copy of any chromosome, so the total count increases from 46 to 47, right? And whenever that happens, you have some extra copy of genes because that extra chromosome is going to have genes on it. So when you have extra genes, some extra proteins are getting synthesized. So something extra is happening in your body and that is the cause of this disorder. So if you look at the, the, all the 46 chromosomes present inside the human body, you see all of them are homologous pair except for the 21. So in 21, you actually have 3. That is why it is also known as trisomy 21. Tri means 3. Zome is derived from chromosomes. So trisome means 3 chromosomes. And it happens at chromosome number 21. That is, it. That is why this disease is also known as trisomy 21. So some of the symptoms of Down syndrome are the, the individual generally have a short height, they also have big wrinkled tongue and their facial uh, features are very different like they have flattened nose, the tongue is also different, their mouth is always partially opened, I mean it is not either completely closed or completely open, partially open the mouth, broad palm and a lot of crease on the palm, physical and mental retardation is also seen. Increased risk of heart diseases, thyroid disorders, mental illness. So since such individuals have increased risk of so many diseases, therefore their health, there, there are chances that their health might get spoiled at a very early age. The next chromosomal disorder is the Kleinfelter syndrome. This is again a genetic disorder and it was named after Harry Kleinfelter who first discovered it in 1940. So the cause for this is the presence of an extra copy of chromosome in extra copy of X chromosome in males. Now in males, if you talk about the sex chromosomes, in a normal male, how is it? It is XY, right? Now if you have one extra copy of X in this XY, what will how will it be? It will be XXY, right? So again here also you are having one extra chromosome. So the total chromosome count is now 47 instead of 46. So what happens in this case? So instead of 46, you now have 47 because instead of one X chromosome, you have two X chromosome and therefore the sex chromosome in males become XXY. So this is also known as 47 XXY or just XXY because of this chromosomal abnormality. Now, what is the underlying cause of Kleinfelter syndrome? Now, why do you get this extra sex chromosome? Because we already uh, learned about sex determination where we saw that the Y chromosome comes from the father, the X chromosome comes from the mother. So, always it has to be XY. So, how do we get that XXY? Now, this happens due to non-disjunction event during gametogenesis. Now, how is the sex chromosome formed? By fusion of the male sex gamete and the fusion of the female sex gamete, right? Now, what happens if the gamete itself is not properly formed? So, if there is an error during the gamete formation, that is seen when the, when the individual or the offspring is actually formed. So, now there are two scenarios where non-disjunction can take place during gametogenesis. So, the first scenario that can take place so let us try to see when this can take place. So by now we know that male, females have XX chromosomes and males have XY chromosomes. So this part is clear for us. This is XY and this is XX. Now what happens during gametogenesis? During gametogenesis, the female is going to produce the egg and the male is going to produce the sperm. Now what we expect is the sperm will either have X or it will have Y and the egg will always have X. So that is the normal condition. 
So in a normal scenario, this is what we expect and then fusion will take place. So a male or a female will be formed, right? Now, when non-disjunction happens, then what happens? The case one where non-disjunction can happen is during meiosis one. When the homologous chromosomes actually separate from each other. So if you look at the different steps of meiosis 1, you see that a metaphase plate is formed where all the homologous chromosomes align along the equatorial plate, right? And then what happens? The spindle tries to push the homologous chromosomes towards both the ends, towards opposite poles. And that is how the homologous chromosomes separate. So sometimes it happens that the homologous chromosomes do not separate properly and that is what is known as non-disjunction. So they are not able to separate properly. So in that case what will happen? A sperm is produced with XY chromosomes. So sperm is produced, that is fine. But now the sperm doesn't have an X or a Y. Instead the sperm has XY. So the sperm itself is XY. Now when fusion will happen, what will happen? Now during fusion, the fusion will happen between the XY sperm and the X egg. So the result will be XXY. And XXY is nothing but Klein-Felter's syndrome. So that is one scenario. The other scenario where this can take place is during meiosis 2 in females. Now this issue can also, I mean the cause can also be with the females. The males might be suffering it but the issue might be with the female. When I say a male, the son might be suffering the problem, but the cause of that might be in the mother. How? During the formation of the egg in meiosis 2, now when the sister chromatids separate from each other, if the sister chromatids are not able to separate properly from each other, in case of females, right? So in that case, what can happen? Now the egg will be formed, but the egg will itself have XX instead of only X. So the fusion will happen between the egg which is XX and the sperm which is Y. And the result of this will be XXY which is the Klein-Fenter syndrome. So basically Klein-Fenter syndrome happens only when the separation between the homologous chromosomes or the separation between the sister chromatids could not take place properly during the process of meiosis. And meiosis happens for gametogenosis, for gamete formation. Right? So when they are not able to separate properly, then a, an, a proper sperm or, an, or a proper egg is not formed. And if that is the case, their fusion results in the formation of XXY, which is a trisomy condition. That is a condition where you have three chromosomes in your sex chromosomes. So some of the symptoms of Klein-Felter syndrome are, in, in this case, since you have XXY instead of XY, so XY denotes all masculine features in a male. But this disease affects only males, right? Because whenever you have a Y in your sex chromosome, it has the gender has to be male. So it affects males, but the thing is, since you have an additional X chromosome, so the male gets some additional feminine characteristics. So overall, uh, the person will be male, so it, he will have overall masculine development, but feminine development is also seen. So feminine development in the form of growth of breast or less facial hair, which is again a feminine characteristic, or less body hair, which is again a feminine characteristic. So a lot of female characteristics are also seen due to the presence of this additional X chromosome. Broader hips. Reduced energy level and strength. Now normally you would have seen that males generally tend to have more physical energy when compared to females, right? But in case of males suffering from Klein-Felter syndrome, they have some feminine characteristics and as a result of which their energy level is also low when compared to other males of the same age, their strength is also low. So they tend to be weaker than other males of the same age group. Infertility is another very important symptom of Klein-Felter syndrome because in this case what happens is even though they have overall the male reproductive system but the male reproductive system is not that functional. They have the testicles but they are quite smaller in size and function wise also they do not do their job properly. So that means infertility is present in such males. Let us look at the third chromosomal disorder that is Turner's syndrome. So this is again a genetic disorder and was named after Henry Turner who first described it in 1938. 
the cause of this syndrome is the absence of an of an X chromosome partly or completely in females. So this happens in females when they do not have the X X chromosome. Instead, they have just one X chromosome. So here also, if you see the total chromosome number is affected. So instead of a total of forty six, such females will have forty five chromosomes. So here you can see. So they just have only one X chromosome. So they should have had two X chromosomes, but they just have one. So that is Turner's syndrome. So it is also termed as 45X because it has only single X chromosome and at which position? At the 45th position because total 46 chromosomes are there, right? So some of the symptoms of Turner's syndrome are reproductive infertility, of course, because uh, when your sex chromosomes are being affected, so menstrual periods doesn't come. So when your menstrual cycle doesn't happen at all, so ovulation doesn't take place. So obviously the female becomes infertile. Short stature, the height doesn't grow much. Absence of menstrual period, obesity, they tend to gain a lot of weight. Webbed neck. So here on the neck region, normal for a normal female, this is how the neck would be. It will be like little uh, slender. But here the webbed neck, so it is like attached to your uh, shoulder. So that is how it will be. Ear infections are very common. Visual impairments are also very common. I mean, it is not that they are all born blind and deaf. They, they are normal, but the chances of their hearing or visual uh, parts being affected is more. So they can get ear infections or visual impairments quite easily when compared to others. Small, very small fingernails, not very long. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.